Today on the CTV News at 5, who police are now appealing to in their search for a missing medicine hat woman's body. Plus, a Lethbridge man serving life in prison for a murder 19 years ago will be allowed to apply for early parole. And how Lethbridge students are helping those in need. Good afternoon. Thanks for being with us. A terrible story about a domestic confrontation between a Calgary couple that turned deadly is bringing back memories of a similar situation that led to the deaths of four people almost a year ago near Claire's home. Family and friends of 20-year-old Lacey Jones McKnight are remembering her as a young woman, even more beautiful on the inside than she was on the outside. She was killed last night in what appears to be a murder and attempted suicide. Friends tell CTV Lacey's estranged fiancé strangled her, then took her body in his car on a bizarre trip across the city of Calgary. Police believe Lacey was killed at a home in South Calgary, then her body was taken in a car to her mother's home in Beddington. Friends tell us the suspect then drove to a nightclub where he showed the body to an acquaintance and confessed. Eventually, police tracked him down to an overpass in Calgary where he tried to hang himself. Last December, three people were killed in a roadside shooting near Claire's home. The shooter was a former boyfriend of one of those killed. He later turned the gun on himself. One other person survived the shootings. Hunters are being urged to help in the search for the body of a missing medicine hat woman. 23-year-old Amy Lewis was last seen June 11th. 34-year-old Jerison Stepanski of Medicine Hat has been charged with second-degree murder in connection with her disappearance. Police say they have evidence that Lewis is deceased, but despite a massive search, her body has never been found. Signs have now been posted in Cyprus and Newell counties urging hunters to be on the lookout for possible clues. Medicine Hat police say hunters are often in remote areas and if they see anything of interest, they should contact police. With hunting season upon us, we certainly would encourage hunters to be mindful that we still have not located Amy Lewis. And if they happen to see anything suspicious, to call their local law enforcement officials of jurisdiction. And of course, if there's anything to or findings, then obviously we'll be contacted. Stepanski will be back in court November the 9th when a judge will rule whether he should remain in custody or be released on bail. One of three girls who was injured when a minivan crashed into a school in St. Paul has now died. Two others remain in hospital, one in critical but stable condition. The other is stable. Richard Edward Benson was charged earlier today with dangerous driving causing bodily harm, resisting arrest and possession of a controlled substance. Benson's family says he had been having seizures for several months. Ralph Benson says his brother had just dropped off his two children at school before the crash happened yesterday morning. The van smashed through a window and then fell into a grade 6 classroom at Reset Junior High School in St. Paul. A Lethbridge man serving life in prison for a murder back in 1992 will be allowed to apply for early parole. A jury ruled this afternoon that Adrian Davis can begin the parole process in September of 2014, two and a half years earlier than set out in the original sentence. As Terry Vogt reports, the decision was handed down following a week-long hearing at Lethbridge Court of Queen's Bench. I like how clear his eyes are. For the family of murder victim Kenneth Jackson, the week-long hearing has been difficult to sit through. A painful reminder of a senseless killing 20 years ago. It's, it's, it's something that's with you every day. It doesn't go away because you, you, you never get to say goodbye. So you spend the rest of your life trying to. Trisha Coburn's brother Kenneth Jackson was murdered in 1992, driven to a park on the outskirts of Lethbridge where he was shot in the neck with a high-powered rifle. During the trial, there was evidence that Adrian Davis was angry because he believed Jackson had been spreading AIDS. Davis was sentenced to life in prison, but applied under the faint hope clause to have parole eligibility reduced from the mandatory 25 years. During this hearing, the jury heard from parole officers, psychologists, and character witnesses. They also heard victim impact statements from members of Jackson's family. After five days of testimony and arguments, the jury ruled Davis could apply for parole on September 29, 2014, two and a half years earlier than set out in the original sentence. Mr. Davis is certainly very pleased that the jury saw fit to 
reduce his parole eligibility. He's certainly excited about the opportunity to begin that slow process of reintegration to the community. He's got some good goals in mind and if he works towards them, it will go good for him. I believe a second chance is what he needs now. I was hoping for a little bit less time shaved off, but I hope he takes his time to do what he needs to do to finish getting out and bettering his life. Terry Vogt, CTV News, Lethbridge. Reducing the eligibility for parole doesn't necessarily mean when Davis will be granted early parole. The final decision will still be up to the parole board. Possible resolution for a man accused of beating a Lethbridge police officer nearly to death has been set back more than a week. In February, Constable Norman Smith was attacked while trying to arrest 25-year-old Aaron Head and another man. The beating left the officer with a fractured skull and bleeding on the brain. In June, police issued a warrant when Head didn't appear in court. The Fugitive Apprehension Unit arrested Head at a traffic stop in Calgary in September. Earlier this week, Head's lawyer thought they may have a resolution today, but in court this morning, he asked that the case be set over until November the 6th. Dory Rossiter, we are just a couple of days away from positive numbers once again. Absolutely. And now it looks like it will be on mm -hmm. Sunday. Yesterday we were saying it looked like it was going to be into Monday, but now it looks like late Saturday into Sunday. We'll start to see the wind direction change. That's all we're waiting for is that wind direction at the surface and up top to really start kicking in those warmer temperatures. Wait till you see the five day forecast. I'll have details in a couple of minutes. We will definitely stick around for that. Thanks, Dory. Firefighters from across southern Alberta are in Lethbridge this weekend for their annual conference. Classroom sessions begin tomorrow. But today, they were at Fire Hall number four, learning a pack mentality for fighting blazes from a highly rated Ohio based instructor. We we'll get a closer look through the camera of CTV's Daryl Rummelt. Welcome inside a firefighter's classroom. The focus here is residential structure fires, which are uh, the most common fire that we go to and have a high life hazard. In this scenario, a fire begins in the oven of a first floor apartment and spreads quickly. Outside, instructor Bob Krause calls his shots. You guys are attacked. Teams are identified, attack, search and rescue, and backup. The plan is outlined and the crews proceed in the first of many tests on the day. The training that these guys are gonna get is invaluable. And the reason is, is that the prevalence of fires is decreasing across North America. We can create fires repeatedly over a very, very short amount of time to get them an experience that they haven't had some in quite some time. So we can create uh, a year's worth of experience potentially in an afternoon. As the scenario continues, the search crew tries to locate any people inside. While attack tries to calm the roaring flames. The Lethbridge Fire Department responds to around 100 calls a year of places with fire damage with dollar value loss. Each year in North America, around 100 firefighters lose their lives, making the training they receive of the utmost importance. And that kind of experience is, you can't get from a textbook. It's you have to experience it, to feel it, to, to feel the heat and feel, see the smoke and, and know what it's like in order to get that kind of training. Over the course of the weekend, some 135 firefighters will go through real life training exercises like these. Each one more difficult with more obstacles than the last each with their own lessons to be learned. Invaluable lessons, say local fire officials, ones that will help them save the lives of people in real life situations. Daryl Rummel, CTV News, Lethbridge. Lethbridge College has entered into a bloody battle. It's the college's fifth annual blood drive. Students, staff and alumni are hoping to raise 250 units of blood for Canadian Blood Services in the month of November. Blood Services officially say this year and for the next four years they need to recruit 90,000 new donors across Canada to keep up with the hospital demand for blood and blood products. College officials say they hope to do their small part. We're a part of the community and, and all our staff, thousand staff, and all our students uh, really are trying to make that contribution back to the community. It's part, part of the fabric of our institutions. The biggest group of donors we have is starting to age and will be unable to donate and we need to replace those with new donors. Not necessarily younger donors, we're actually looking for donors between the ages of 20 to 35, 40. You can set up a donation by calling 1-888-2-DONATE or online at blood.ca. 
Two Southern Alberta men said goodbye to their flowing locks today to help support breast cancer patients and survivors. Kyle Rockenbach convinced a friend, Derek Pennell, to join him as they got their heads shaved in the lobby of the Chinook Regional Hospital. Proceeds will support the Alberta Cancer Foundation's cancer therapy programs at the Jack 80 Cancer Center. Well, my grandmother's in remission right now. Uh, she has breast cancer herself. And I don't know, I had long hair and I figured it was a good thing to do for a good cause. We want people to know that when you come to Lethbridge for cancer treatments, we not only have you know fantastic doctors and a great nursing staff, but we're, we're building programs that when you come here, that you're going to get the best care as you would get in Calgary or Edmonton and without the travel. Rockenbach, who's an employee of Tallestrup Construction in Lethbridge, raised over $2,600 through the head shave. A Westside Elementary School is doing their part to help feed the less fortunate. Over the past several weeks, students at Mike Mountain Horse Elementary School have been collecting food donations for the Interfaith Food Bank. And today, those donations were collected and will help to stock the shelves. As temperatures get colder, the demand for food increases, and teachers at the school are hoping that this food drive helps teach a very valuable lesson. This is an invaluable. These, these students learn about the, the, generosity, the, the impact that generosity can have. On, on their community and they, they learn that there's all sorts of different groups of people in the world and we get to, to help out and just do the best that we can to help make the, the world a better place. Food bank officials say the demand for supplies is only going to increase as the holidays near. Treatment is underway on a number of sick dogs that forced the closure of the city's animal shelter last week. A veterinarian has confirmed that the respiratory illness affecting several dogs in the shelter is three different bacterial strains. It can be treated with antibiotics and will need four to ten days to take full effect. The shelter is still operating under quarantine and not adopting out dogs with emergent housing for a limited number of dogs. Regular operating status will be evaluated early next week. Water damage has forced the closure of the Fritzsick pool in Lethbridge. Repairs in the pool, change rooms are expected to take up to two weeks. The pool will be operating with its normal schedule until that time. And the city says no other areas of the building will be affected by the repair work. More than 100,000 people have already visited Alberta's newest Mormon temple. The temple held an open house for 18 days so the public could get a look at the massive structure. Now uh, underway for the church's formal dedication service on Sunday. The dedication is part of a weekend of celebration, which includes a sold-out event at the Stampede Corral. Time now for a look at today's markets.